In Creo Parametric, you can use the PTC constraint set functionality to capture different configurations of an assembly that you otherwise can't do via component flexibility, family tables, or mechanisms. And to illustrate this, I'm going to use the example of the Apollo moon missions. And I'm using some models that I got from GrabCAD. If you go to grabcad.com and look up NASA Saturn V, you'll find a model by William Jake Edwards. I've got an assembly open and it's got two components. It has the lunar excursion module and also the command module. And by the way, when I was at Blue Origin, we talked about how this model of using a command module that would be in orbit and then an excursion module, that was just nuts at the time. Everyone in the 1950s in movies and serials and comic books assumed that it was going to be a big giant rocket with a vertical landing and a vertical takeoff and they realized that could not be done and then a brilliant scientist came up with the concept of having an excursion module that would separate from another vehicle, land on the planet, and then launch from the moon, and then reunite and then head back to the Earth. But anyhow, in order to create that unit of the command module and the excursion module, after the Saturn V went out into space, it had to perform a very complicated maneuver. It was a transposition and docking. Let's say I wanted to capture that in Creo Parametric. Here I have my assembly. These two components right now are roughly in the configuration that you would see at the top of the Saturn V rocket. With this transposition, you would have the command module basically blast off a little bit and then do a 180 degree turn and then reunite with the excursion module. How would I do that in here? Well, let's take a look at the subassembly for the command module. Let me click on it and then use edit definition from the mini toolbar. Right now I have my constraints. I've got a coincident constraint and a distance constraint. I allow assumptions for the rotation angle. What I can do is I can create a new set of constraints. And if I click on the set that's up here, well, right now we have a set name. I'm gonna change the name. And by the way, be careful what you name it. The name is actually going to be case sensitive for stuff that I'm going to show later on. And I'm gonna call this the launch configuration. I like to use all caps just to avoid any problems with that case sensitivity. And right now it says that the set is enabled. I'm going to uncheck this. And when I uncheck it, you'll notice now I have no constraints and the color of the component changed to purple. Now I will go to the new set button and here I have my set. Let's define our new constraints. And for the new constraints, like I mentioned, it would do this maneuver where it would rotate 180 degrees. Let me move it off a little bit of a distance. And for the first constraint, I will pick this conical surface and then this surface over here. Let's do another constraint. I will pick this flat surface. And let me rotate the model and get this flat surface there. And now I'm going to leave it with allow assumptions uh, so that it will be fully constrained and I don't have to identify a third constraint. Now I will select set four up here and I'm going to change the name. Let's call this the transposition and hit the enter key. And so now I've got two different sets of constraints. Right now, the one that's enabled is transposition. I can uncheck it. Once again, I have no constraints. And then select the previous one, set enabled. Hey, and it will update to what I had defined before. So now I have two different sets of constraints defined for this component. I will hit the check mark. And when you have multiple sets of constraints defined for a component, there is a special parameter that is created in that component. And by the way, you, there are other situations where you might create multiple sets of constraints for a component, but that's typically with mechanisms. For example, if you think of a hydraulic piston, it might have a slider connection 
and a pin connection for what it is connected to. But anyhow, let's go to our parameters. I will click on the parameter icon in the ribbon. And right now it's showing me the parameters in my assembly. We have description and modeled by. I'm going to change the look in drop down list from assembly to component. And now the pick icon is active. Let me select the component that I have multiple constraint sets for. Now it has this parameter called PTC constraint set and it's currently set to a value of launch. If I click on the value, I have a drop down list where I can change this from launch to transposition. If I click the OK button, it doesn't change. But if you take a look down at the bottom of the screen, I have the indication that the model needs to be regenerated. If I click on the regeneration, hey, it changes to the other active constraint set. So that's how you can capture these multiple different configurations. You can also create a family table using these different constraint sets. So let me go to the family table command. And right now it says that this model currently has no family table design variations. Let's click on the icon to add a table column. And in the family table columns dialog box, I'm going to change the radio button to parameter. Once again, let's change the look in drop down list to component. And with the pick icon, I will select the command module. And here we have PTC constraint set. Let's insert selected and then close the select parameter dialog box. Let's click OK out of the family items dialog box. And so now you can see that our column is for PTC constraint set colon FID underscore 69. That FID stands for feature identification number. And if I actually go to add an additional column to my model tree, let's see if I can find where feature ID number is. Let me add it in here and click the OK button. We can see that the first component has a feature ID number of 70 and the second component has a feature ID number of 69. Hey, the reason that the first component has a higher number is they actually reordered the components in the assembly when I was setting it up. But anyhow, we have our column. Let's create our rows and I'll create two of them. And for the first instance name, let me call this Apollo Saturn five and then let's call the second one apollo and i'll just call it moon we can add in some common names like apollo saturn five configuration and then for the second one let's call this apollo and this will be i don't know moon mission all right, so now we have our cells in here. Unfortunately, you don't get a drop down list where you can select the different values. You have to fill them in manually. Let me change this to say launch. And then let's change the second one to say transposition. Let's verify the family table. Hey, both of them were a success. Let's click the close button. And to see what they look like, we can select one of the rows and then we have the little icon that looks like eyeglasses and we can see what that configuration will look like you can zoom in a little bit and then let's close that and select this one and we can go to the eyeglasses for that one and we can see yep there they have it transposed and docked and then close that one so that's how you can use these different things oh yeah and of course you can open up these ones in different windows for example if i select that one and choose open hey here we have it in the launch configuration let me go back to my generic of my family table but that again is how you can use the ptc constraint set functionality in order to capture different configurations of an assembly that you can't otherwise do with things like mechanisms or component flexibility.